Minus, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qudaybiyah Palace schools of citizens, ambassadors of brotherly countries, clerics, intellectuals and businessmen. His Royal Highness called on GCC countries to step up their cooperation at the highest levels to agree on a unified stance regarding the rapid changes taking place in the region. He stressed that amid these rapidly unfolding incidents and the serious threats they pose, there is no room for hesitation and that advanced executive steps have to be taken towards a full union among GCC countries. As called for by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. He affirmed that the GCC is a strong bloc that some sides seek to divide, and therefore they have to be more vigilant and adopt unified, not separate stances towards all issues. His Royal Highness expressed concern over the continuous targeting of the kingdom in different forms, noting that exploiting foreign aid to interfere in national affairs is just one evidence of the plot staged against the country, and are totally rejected by Bahrain's leadership and people. He affirmed that Bahrain is a peaceful country that does not interfere in the affairs of others and does not accept any interference in its own affairs, adding that they do not need mediators and the doors between the members of the One Family Bahraini Society are open enough and there is no need for any third parties to help open them. His Royal Highness said that some sides have exploited the atmosphere of openness and democracy enjoyed by Bahrain with the purpose of subverting the stability witnessed by the kingdom. However, he added that such attempts have been surprised by the strong will and unwavering determination to carry on reforms and democracy. He also said that the Bahraini people are well aware of the evil plot staged against their homeland and reiterated support to those who rallied together to protect the nation, pledging zero tolerance against those found guilty of attempting to destabilize national security and stability. He called for the need not to allow the atmosphere of openness and freedom prevailing in the GCC countries to be used by some sides to sow divide and plant seeds of sedition among citizens of the same country. He pointed out that Bahrain and other GCC countries succeeded in achieving development and prosperity goals, while others failed, built cohesive and solidarity among countries, and therefore should leave no loophole for those seeking to divide their people. His Royal Highness underlined that the Arab and Islamic nations boast huge potentials and wealth and attempts to target them and fragment them would not stop, stressing that they have to be more aware and vigilant in order to ward off plans to drag them to the abyss of chaos and destruction. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister lauded the efforts of the custodian of the two holy mosques to consolidate joint Arab and GCC action, praising his wisdom and far-sightedness reflected in his call to move from the cooperation phase to a union one. He urged drawing lessons from the policies of many Arab countries whose people were promised of a spring but found only entry in fighting and destruction.
His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Qudaybiya Palace the participants in the joint meeting of the Federation of Arab News Agency, FANA, and the organization of the Asia-Pacific News Agency, OANA, hosted by the Kingdom. His Royal Highness called on heads of Arab and Asian news agencies currently on a visit to the Kingdom to participate in a key meeting to be closely informed about the reality of Bahrain's stability, democracy, reform and advanced human rights situation in order to be aware of the size of the deliberate smear campaigns staged against the country by some media outlets supposedly committed to impartiality and objectivity. He underlined the Kingdom's keen interest in extending bridges of cooperation with brotherly and friendly countries in very various fields, including media, out of its belief that cooperation is the best bridge that enhances understanding and respect among people. He expressed hope that the Fana Oana meeting would contribute to consolidating joint cooperation and coordination, upgrading media work across the Arab world and Asia, and opening up new horizons of cooperation that serve the present and future interests of their people. His Royal Highness stressed that sincere and strong stances can protect people and countries and safeguard them against division and fragmentation, highlighting the pivotal role of the media discourse in raising awareness and motivating work in public for public interest and urged mass media to adhere to credibility while covering events, emphasizing that true information staves off danger and preserves civic peace. Participants in the Fana Oana meeting extended profound thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his interest in the media field and support to the journalists and media personnel, lauding the freedom of opinion and expression prevailing in the kingdom. They praised the warm welcome and hospitality accorded them and the excellent participations for the meetings, hailing His Royal Highness the Premier's appreciation of the media and press personnel. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met today with the Chief Executive Officer of Investcor, Mr. Namir Kadir, at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of the financial and banking industry to Bahrain's development, in particular the key role those sectors play in supporting Bahrain's foreign direct investment strategies. He also stressed the importance of the financial and banking industry to Bahrain's private labour market, highlighting the significant number of Bahrainis employed in those sectors. His Royal Highness highlighted the significant role Investcor continues to play in Bahrain and the wider GCC region. For his part, Mr. Kadir Kadar expressed thanks to His Royal Highness's constant support to Bahrain's economic development. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Majesty's representative for philanthropic and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamid Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Abdullah bin Ali Kanu Center for the Diagnosis and Assessment of Disability in the presence of the Minister of Social Development, Dr. Fatima Al Balushi, the Minister of Health, Dr. Sadiq Al Shahabi, and the sons of the late Abdullah Kanu. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his pride for the royal confidence in the opening of the vital and important centre, which underlines the concerns of Bahrainis in all areas.
He pointed out that the vision of His Majesty the King comes in order to provide all the services and benefit from them in all circumstances and noted that such centres contribute to creating health and social conditions as well as capabilities needed to provide the best services that meet the needs of those with disabilities in order to integrate them into society, to participate effectively in the overall development process under the prosperous reign of His Majesty the King. His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed appreciation for the efforts by the Ministry of Social Development, the Ministry of Health and all relevant parties in this regard, and said that naming the centre on behalf of the late Abdullah Kanu is confirmation of the appreciation of Bahrain to its loyal citizens who have served the country and its people. Bahrain ratified the International Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and then initiated the National Strategy for People with Disabilities in order to take concrete steps to implement obligations in this regard. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, received the General Manager of Fastlink, Abdul Rahim Al Dalawar and Mohammed Abdul Khalik. Present were the Vice President of the Bahrain Athletics Association, Mohammed Abdul Latif Al Jalal, and Board Member Badr Nasser Mohammed. During the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Khalid underlined the support provided by Fastlink to the sports movement in Bahrain to become one of the leading companies in support of various local sporting events. His Highness said that Fastlink joined the sports market and contributed to the success of many sporting events, especially His Majesty the King's Football Cup. He also asserted that the support provided by Fastlink for the sports sector reflects its eagerness to play their social responsibility role towards Bahraini society. During the meeting, they also discussed bilateral cooperation between the two parties. For his part, the general manager of Fastlink underli underlined the prominent role played by His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa in the progress of athletic sports in Bahrain. A souvenir was then presented to His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputized Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, advisor to His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, to attend the graduation of more than 240 medical students from 15 countries at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Bahrain. 
Present were the Minister of Health, Dr. Sadiq Al Shahabi, other ministers, Shura and Representative Council members. Shah Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa conveyed congratulations of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the graduates and wishes of further success for them. He praised the role of the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland, Bahrain, and said it represents a leading medical and educational institution in the kingdom and plays an important role in education and development of Bahraini medical staff at the highest international standards in the areas of health and medical care. He stressed that the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, is keen to strengthen the existing cooperation with the College, so as to contribute to the upgrading of the medical sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The President of the RCSI Bahrain, Professor Samar Atum, said the College has made a lot of achievements over the past decade and continued to implement its five-year plan initiated in 2012, with the focus on teaching and learning, research and community service. Morris Manning, President of the National University of Ireland, expressed in a speech sincere thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronising the ceremony, stressing that the Kingdom of Bahrain is a natural site and very convenient for receiving higher education. Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, over 240 medical students from 15 countries celebrated their graduation and took the Hippocratic Oath at the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland. In the presence of Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, advisor to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, and watched by proud families and friends, the fifth conferring ceremony honoured 81 future doctors, 135 nurses and 26 master's graduates. The president of RCSI Bahrain, Professor Samir Otum. We are very pleased to graduate our fifth cohort, which is um, more than 246 students from medicine, nursing and postgraduate students. Um, the, uh, this year graduating coincides with our 10th anniversary celebration. Uh, we, the university established in 2004 and uh, with a small number of students and staff and uh, up to now we are locating in a state-of-the-art building with uh, more than 1,200 students. Professor Hannah McGee, Dean of the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin. Uh, the Royal College of Surgeons in Bahrain is the sister college of the Royal College of Surgeons in Dublin. We are delighted to be here as we are annually for the annual graduation of both the medical and uh, nursing students. We have almost 200 students graduating today, um, 81 medical, 140 nursing and one PhD. Uh, and so this is our annual um, event when we come with the President from RCSI in Dublin, the Chancellor of the National University of Ireland and we join our colleagues in RCSI Bahrain for, for our conferring. We have the same programmes, the same curriculum, uh, the same degree, the same standards in Ireland and Bahrain and as two island countries we are delighted to work cooperatively uh, to bring uh, healthcare leaders uh, for the, for the uh, healthcare systems in, uh, across the world um, for the coming generations. Mohammed Ahmed Maki Ibrahim won the James Finnegan Prize in Medicine. My name is Mohammed Ahmed Maki Ibrahim. I'm one of the graduates today of RCSI Bahrain and uh, thankfully I've graduated as a valedictorian of the class. Uh, I'm uh, looking more into internal medicine. Uh, in the future, hopefully within the next year, I'll be doing internship in the Salmania Medical Complex. And later on, I'm hoping to go uh, outside Bahrain and continue my studies. My name is Anthony Habib. Uh, I'm Canadian Lebanese. I came from uh, Canada to study at RCSI Bahrain for five years now. Uh, my future plans hold that I go to McMaster University and do orthopedic residency there. I start July 1st. Why did you choose Bahrain? Uh, I chose Bahrain because of the uh, culture and the multi-diversity that's here. And I've told that it's a great school and they proved me right. So I came here about five years ago and it was fantastic ever since. My name is Ahmed Farid al I'm from Dubai. I've studied six years. It was really great six years in RCSI. And I'm definitely looking for a transplant, kidney transplant. Yeah, that's a really good major and I hope all of us as graduates do a great job learning from our teachers as well. I'm Dr. Hana Ahmed al Fayez. I'm a consultant family physician. I'm doing, I just have a master in health ethics and law. Today marks the culmination of years of hard work studying for hundreds of young people who have attended the fifth graduation ceremony at the Royal College of Surgeons of Ireland. Parents, teachers and the students themselves, our young medical professionals of the future, have gathered here today to celebrate this momentous achievement. This is Esther Galoom for Bahrain Television. 
The Minister of State for Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdullah Hussein bin Ali Mirza, yesterday paid a visit to the Maharik Governorate. The minister thanked the governor for hosting the meeting. Underlining the preparedness of the Electricity and Water Authority to cope with the Bahraini summer and the facilities provided by the authority for the electricity and water instalment dues for those facing financial challenges, widows, the sick and retired, in line with directors of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. He, also, he was also briefed on the requirements of Muharraq Count residents. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid Al Naimi, approved today the results of the first round of secondary school exams 2013 to 2014 for general, technical, and vocational divisions. On the occasion, the Minister congratulated the successful students, their parents, and teachers, expressing his gratitude and, and appreciation to the wise leadership for their support to educational sector. He commended the efforts of the employees in the educational field and the members of the administrative, academic and technical bodies, highlighting this academic year's outstanding results, in which the passing rate reached almost 97%. The Southern Governorate organized a meeting in coordination with the Ministry of Housing in the presence of the Governor of the Southern Governorate, Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Housing, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Assistant Under Secretary for Housing Projects, Sami Abdullah Buhaza, where they reviewed present and future housing projects in the Southern Province. The Governor of the Southern Governorate delivered a speech during which he expressed his thanks and appreciation to the Ministry of Housing and praised the keenness and confidence of the people in the, in the know regarding the efforts of the Ministry of Housing. He highlighted the development and progress boom witnessed by the Southern Governorate since the launch of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's reform project, citing the various development projects and investments which, he said, have boosted the national economy and ensured ideal usage of the Governorate's vast area. He referred to the present and future housing projects, including the housing projects in Hunainiya, the Sheikh Salman bin Ahmed Al Fatih Fort Southwest, Safra, Zalik, Jal, and Askar. For his part, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Housing, Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, said the Ministry has given importance to projects of social housing in the southern province in an effort to ease waiting list housing demands. He said that the Ministry is currently constructing 1,136 housing units and plans are underway to construct a further 5,570 three units. And for more information on the meetings that took place today among the Federation of Arab News Agencies and the Organization of Asia-Pacific News Agencies, we turn to Danielle Deporto in this report. Bahrain News Agency, BNA, is leading representatives of news agencies from across the globe this week as it hosts members of the Federation of Arab News Agencies, FANA, and the Organization of Asia-Pacific News Agencies, OANA, as they hold their first joint meeting and respective General Assembly, Executive and Technical Committee meetings under the guidance of BNA Director General Mohanad Suleiman al Noemi. Taking place at Bahrain Sofitel Hotel today and tomorrow, the series of meetings are intended to develop cooperation within and between FANA and OANA. Uh, at first, we are happy we are in Bahrain and with the Bahrain TV. Uh, this country, uh, everybody uh, come here is like it from Asia, from Australia, from all uh, the countries where they come. And uh, we discussed many things about the process uh, between the uh, uh, news agency in uh, OANA and uh, we try uh, to see what we will do in the future about uh, our new agency and the service uh, which we give it to our uh, customer. I must say that this uh, meeting is very well organized by uh, Bahrain, be a news agency, and we are very uh, impressed by your organization. Uh, everything is uh, very smooth. Uh, in fact, the discussion was very precise and very uh, decisive. The exhibition opened today with the unveiling of a digital photo exhibition, displaying photos taken by 16 Arab and Asian news agencies that accentuate the aspects of life and main achievements of their participating countries. 
Fana held a meeting of the presidents of Arab news agencies, representing Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Kuwait, the UAE, Egypt and Morocco, whilst Oana held their 37th executive board meeting, followed by a meeting of its technical committee and the presentation of country reports. Awan is a really interesting organisation, uh, some 44 news agencies from a very, very diverse range of, uh, of regions and countries. Uh, and everyone has, uh, has different needs and, and different f formats in terms of their, the way their, their agencies operate. So it's really it's good to learn from each other, um, look at development of, uh, of news, uh, development of, of uh, the commercial side of news agencies uh, in, in some cases, uh, and how we can all share content and, and share experiences to improve our agencies. All the members of OANA, uh, OANA uh, uh, composed of, of, of the 44 Asia Pacific news agencies. So um, relationship among them are very good and very close and very friendly. So um, many many news agencies exchange their uh, mutual mutual information and their own experiences. There is a need for ONA members to discuss on the changing times and challenges faced by news agencies of member countries, uh, where we find that uh, the the internet has uh, has uh, taken away our monopoly in disseminating news and information, so we have to adjust to the challenges, new challenges, so that uh, we will be uh, relevant to the media industry. Many Arab news agencies are already members of Awana, which manages two thirds of the world's news flow via 44 agencies spanning 35 countries that represent great diversity and produce 60% of the world's GDP from 40% of its population. The necessity of strengthening internal and external cooperation in order to tackle industry challenges and progress at both national and regional levels was stressed throughout the day. The delivery of comprehensive and accurate news content is the paramount concern. There will be further meetings for Awana and Fana tomorrow and we will be there to bring you the full coverage. For Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Dr. Hassan Fakhra, attended today the launch of high-tech security video management solution technology. On this occasion, Dr. Fakhra expressed his appreciation to the Kingdom's leadership and the government for their support, which contributed to attracting international projects to Bahrain to serve as a gateway and regional headquarters for its operations in the region. He pointed to the historic visit by His Majesty the King to Moscow and the agreement signed between the private sector in both countries which would have a positive and deep impact in attracting investment and Russian projects to the country. The minister added that these relations were further reinforced by the successful visit by His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to Moscow recently, and which crystallized in turn a lot of agreements and understandings that highlighted the pivotal role that can be played by Bahrain as a gateway for business and investment throughout the region. Dr. Fakhra also pointed to the multiple Russian investments which began to grow in the kingdom in the various fields of industry, economy and trade.